Last week, I had the good fortune to record a podcast with another great Canadian, Perrin Beatty. Perrin is the president of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and a former federal cabinet minister for Brian Mulroney. With Mr. Mulroney's funeral happening in a few days, I want to get Perrin's thoughts on the former prime minister as a eulogy for the podcast listener. Please enjoy this NSP short on Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. I knew that, that Brian was, that his health wasn't good, and I knew that he'd had a very close call previously. Um, but I was shocked nonetheless by, by uh, the news that, that he had died. I, I think when we see a figure who's so commanding, who's had such a, an impact on, on our countries and, our, and, and global affairs, we assume that somehow they'll go on forever, and we're not prepared to, to understand that they're going to be leaving us. And so I was, was shocked, and the last two weeks have been a period of considerable in, introspection for me to think back about the time that we spent together and to look at how history will, will judge them, and also to, to look at how the system has changed today from the one that, that I was privileged to be part of, and what sort of lessons we can draw out of, uh, out of Brian Mulroney's experience for you know, what he did right, what he did wrong. Um, first of all, I, I worked very hard against Brian at the two leadership conventions he ran in. I was not his supporter at the time that he ran for, for leader. I supported Joe Clark. And uh, I fully expected after the 1984 leadership convention that I would be sent into exile and that my political career might very well have been over. It was the opposite in that he reached out to me and to others who'd supported Joe and brought us into the center. And I asked him about it one day and he said, look, the day that the convention was over, a page was turned. We're on the same team and what's history is, is history. It's where we go from here. That developed in me an intense loyalty to somebody whose instincts were that. It, it's interesting watching in political parties after... after um, leadership conventions. Um, Bill Davis did the same thing. We almost lost the leadership in 1970 in Ontario to Al Lawrence. But then he reached out, brought in all of Al's people, healed the, the party. Brian Mulroney did it. Other political parties, um, the winners have gone around shooting, shooting the wounded mm. and uh, leaving that, that sense of bitterness and exclusion that makes it very difficult then to to uh, recover and to have a healthy party. Um, I once said to Brian, you know, the Conservative caucus is by nature a very, at least was in those days, a very factious group. You would go to caucus each week, each Wednesday, because you weren't sure there was going to be one the following Wednesday. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, liberals had a fascination with power and how you could gain it, how you could hold it. The um, Conservatives had a fascination with infighting with each other. And particularly with with whoever was with, was leader, attendance uh, through curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I once said to Brian, uh, "You, you know, you. Everybody talks about your achievement and in, in winning two back to back majorities. I believe that your that your single most important achievement is being able to hold the Conservative caucus together in all this time. Ultimately, the caucus fractured." You saw the Reform Party growing on the right. right. And, of course, Lucien Bouchard uh, created the Bloc Québécois. But, uh, but he was extraordinary in building coalitions. He was the best manager of people I've ever met in my life. Um, even when we were down in the polls to, to somewhere near single digits, members of caucus would have crawled over broken glass uh, to support him. Uh, I have never seen anybody who was better in terms of developing relationships, who was sincere about it, who genuinely cared for people, but, uh, but for whom this was an important part of his politics as well. Uh, he developed a, a genuine friendship. You, you look at the people who, the leaders of the G7, uh, Cole, Mitterrand, uh, Thatcher, Reagan. It, uh, first of all, Brian Mulroney was the, only, was the only foreigner who was asked to speak the only foreign leaders asked to speak at Reagan's funeral and at Bush's funeral um, because of the close personal relationship they had. And they built these ties where, where the leaders would spend political capital for each other, both because they believed in what the other believed in, but also because of the, the intense uh, personal connection. Uh, I remember um, being home 
uh, on a Saturday night watching Saturday night of the movies on, on TVO, the phone ringing and picking it up and hearing parent it's Brian. Uh, I just wanted to call you to say that Mila saw you in the house this week and said you did a great job. And my reaction on a, you know, nine o'clock on a Saturday night was to say, you know, Prime Minister G, thanks, thanks a lot for calling, but this really wasn't, wasn't necessary to, for you to do this on Saturday night. And his response was, well, I think it was. I think it was important that you know that, that I feel that way. He's just constantly reaching out to people. So part of his success in building a new coalition in Quebec was that he developed his relationship with Robert Bourassa after he had been premier the first time and was defeated and was an outcast. Brian Mulroney reached out to him and developed a personal friendship that when Bourassa came back into, into office, allowed them to, to build a formidable uh, federalist coalition. Um, he would reach out, Bob Ray will tell you, that when his, when his brother died, that one of the first phone calls he got was from Brian Mulroney. And this wasn't something Brian did for show. There was no publicity about it. It was because he genuinely cared and was reaching out to somebody who uh, wasn't from his political background. He treated others with generosity and with, with respect. And he was a unifier uh, in that sense. He believed that, that the role of a political leader has to be to, to bring people in. Politics today instead has become much more exclusionary. It's how do you divide, uh, how do you foment anger and profit from it, and how do you play to your base and then wedge the opposition? Um, in those days, particularly for the Conservative Party, we knew that we were the minority party, and the only way that we could win was by reaching out and bringing in people who, who didn't belong before. Uh, that was Brian Mulroney's instinct always. And then he was somebody who who believed that, you know, too often with, with politicians, they want office for the sake of holding office. Well, Rooney wanted office for the sake of what he could do with the office, how he could use it to make a difference. And he was prepared to lead public opinion, as he did on free trade, and as he did on the GST, and as he did on Meech Lake, and as he did on South Africa and on so many other issues. And uh, so often he was guided by instincts that were simply humane. Um, I was there. But this was something that was never written up. Nobody else was there. I was there when Ronald Reagan came to, uh, to Ottawa. He used to speak to Parliament. And the Prime Minister hosted a luncheon at 24 Sussex with about a half dozen members of the U.S. cabinet and a half dozen members of ours. And um, it was fascinating to me to be there to see the relationship between Mulroney and and uh, and Reagan. And the discussion was quite wide ranging, but it got to South Africa, where our position was absolutely the opposite of Margaret Thatcher's, and uh, where Ronald Reagan had certainly not bought into seeing Nelson Mandela as a as a good guy. And I remember Brian turning to Ronald Reagan during the, the lunch and saying, Ron, these people are Nazis. They're on their way out. And the United States has to be on the right side of history. Reagan took no offense to that. He didn't respond to it directly, but he took no offense. And what it brought home to me was, this was the sort of thing you could say only to a friend. If the relationship had been a formal, structured one, um, you could not have been, been that direct. We opposed the Reagan position on Nicaragua, for example. South Africa was another example. But, but all of this was founded on a, on a position of, of trust uh, in each other. And, it, it, and Mulroney was quite prepared to, to use those relationships to promote uh, ideas and principles that, that he believed were the right ones. And South Africa, Canada was a leader on the right side of the issue. The other private moment that I remember was when caucus was torn on the issue of, of gay rights. Um, and I forget exactly what the issue of the day was, but, but the Charter of Rights was in. The government was determined to bring legislation into line with, uh, with the Charter. 
but it was very divisive within caucus. And I remember Brian's comment was, it was very simple. He said, I can't bring myself to hate somebody on the basis of who they love. This was simply a very human, humane reaction on his part. It wasn't calculated. It was on the basis of, uh, of his humanity. And um, that should be what guides our, our politicians. We should be looking to repair the tears in our national fabric. We should be looking to have a government that governs for everybody and not just for their own partisan followers. Um, and we should have a government that, that is prepared to lead and is led by itself by principle and not by polls. Um, that's, those are the, the governments that are transformational and the leaders who are remembered by history. 